Hey everyone, Jono here. A number of you across my prior videos have asked me for a guide on the Sony Pocket Station for you gear for bitter memories. And honestly, I can't blame you. The resources online for this peripheral are rather scarce. They're buried in 10 year old forums and some of them are even left untranslated. So I can understand how a simple Google search may not have all the answers you're seeking. This is where I come in. My aim with this video is to alleviate all of the confusion that's out there on this device and contribute some knowledge to the broader Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories community. This is simply because I own two of the damn things. Anywho, before I get into the video, I would like to give a shout out to infamous triple six and infamous underscore triple eight for all of his or her past contributions and work in scanning the Japanese strategy guides and in general for helping me navigate this absolute mess of a product. So, with all that out of the way, let's jump right into things starting with a quick recap of what the heck a Pocket Station is. The Pocket Station was released back in January 1999 by Sony, and it was exclusive to the Japanese market. Surprise, surprise. It is a memory card which features an LCD screen, some buttons, infrared, and built-in flash memory. The device itself allowed for mini games and various add-on softwares to be downloaded to it from about, I think, 83 compatible PlayStation 1 titles. Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories being one of them. The Yu-Gi-Oh! Pocket Station software can only be installed using the Japanese version of Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. With the device plugged into your PlayStation, you select options from the main menu and navigate down to the dedicated software download option. Selecting this will install the game to your device. Note that the app software requires you to have campaign save data in order for it to function. Regarding the data itself, deleting the Pocket Station app does not delete your save data, and vice versa, which is very handy to know. Booting up the Pocket Station, we swipe across our game library until we find Forbidden Memories, which features a very happy bouncing Karibo. Look at this little guy. Accessing the program, we're greeted to its main menu, which consists of four options for now. From top to bottom, the options read Memo, Communication, Deck, and Bag, or Chest if you prefer to call it that. There is a secret fifth option called Card Lottery, which is unlockable after you've beaten the campaign of Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. Of course, like everything in this convoluted series, you'll need to enter a secret passcode to access that menu option, so I'll cover that one a bit later. For now, let's jump back up to the top menu and click on the Memo button. Memo is a rather useless feature. The screen gives you three rows of five boxes. When a box is selected, it allows you to enter one of the 40 cards that exist in your in-game deck and record it in the given space. I believe, don't quote me on this, its intended use was to help you in two player duels to keep track of what cards are in your hand if you've chosen to turn off card images. Rather slow, but it's a feature nonetheless. Exiting out of this, we now select the second option which says communication. This is the most used function of this software. On screen, there are three icons representing various communication features available to you. From top to bottom, the first option is receive, the second option is send, and the third option is obtain via infrared. The first two options are functions that are needed for training, and more importantly, the communication fusion feature. When initiating a trade or fusion, the recipient player needs to select option one, which displays a confirmation screen to proceed. Simples. The sender selects option two and is greeted with four numbered spaces. In each space, the sender selects the desired cards from their chest that they wish to send. Once you've entered what you wanted to send across, select the bottom option to send the cards across to the recipient. Remember, trades are done via infrared, so you need to have both units facing each other. And done. You have now executed a successful trade. Pat yourself on the back for that one. I will cover communication fusion closer to the end of the video as this one takes a bit of explaining. Instead, let's check out option 3 which is obtained via infrared. Obtained via infrared is exactly how it sounds. This feature lets you obtain random cards via an infrared communication. Infrared devices include old school TV remotes or signals from a Game Boy Color. Yu-Gi-Oh! Dark Duel Stories 2 was a prime candidate for this feature if you could get it to work. Anywho, when blasting this thing with infrared, if you sent a signal that matches a card, you'll obtain it in your forbidden memory save data. Hooray, free grindless cards. Obtain via infrared will only give you one copy of a card you don't have. So if you blast a signal that matches a card already in your library, it will display a once only error message. Now, moving back to the main menu. The third option on the list is deck. Self-explanatory. This displays your current deck in forbidden memories. All cards are listed as their canonical game number, and also what listing there are in your actual deck itself. 
If you click on them, you can see the card details, which segues us nicely over to the bag option, or chest as it's called in the game. Another self-explanatory section, card number, type, attack, defense, and name are all displayed in their 32 dot glory. That wraps up the four default options of the main menu. Now onto the secret card lottery function. After beating a game, highlight the fourth menu option, aka the bag option, and press the following buttons in sequence. Right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, and the select button. The screen will change to the card lottery. Throughout its lifetime, Konami released announcements containing lottery codes, which corresponded to a specific monster. These ranged all the way from Cocoon of Evolution, all the way up to Blue Eyes White Dragon. Card Lottery is the only legitimate way of obtaining Black Luster Ritual. I'll paste a link in the description to a forum containing the full list of codes. Thanks again to Infamous underscore Triple Eight for the amazing work done on this one. Despite my best efforts, no matter how many times I entered a code into this thing, it didn't want to accept it. I guess that's why the darn thing says the word good luck, cause good luck in trying to get it to work. I'll add a link to the description to Infamous's Card Lottery video. His ones actually did work. With Lottery out of the way, all that is left is the Communication Fusion feature. Communication Fusion is a feature where you can combine four cards together in order to obtain a powerful boss monster in Forbidden Memories. You would have seen me showcase this in my insect video. In that, I created the Javelin Beetle using Hercules Beetle, Kuwagata Alpha, Quagga Hercules, and Javelin Beetle Pact. Konami released the full list of fusion recipes in the Japanese Forbidden Memories Guide. This feature is how I actually envisioned Konami intended this game to be played. Anywho, to recap communication fusions, you need a sender and a receiver. The receiver is the person who will obtain the new monster card. The sender is the person whose cards will be used up for that fusion. Yes, that's right, the recipient gains all the benefit while the sender loses out on all their hard work. Classic Konami on that one. To initiate the fusion, the recipient goes into the communication menu and clicks the first option. As for the sender, they go into the same menu and select option 2. The sender enters all four cards needed for the fusion. In this case, we're going to try for Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, so we'll select Ultimate Dragon Ritual and three Blue Eyes White Dragons. Remember, like I said before, all communications via infrared need to be done with the units facing each other. Pressing the OK button, the receiver has now obtained a copy of Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Hooray! Now go ahead and clone that memory card because you have legitimately obtained the strongest card in the game. To prove that the fusion actually worked, you can view the card in the chest or bag, whatever you want to call it. Clicking into it, we search for canonical ID 80 and we can see that it refers to Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. The last thing I actually want to cover off is using the Pocket Station with an English version of Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. The Pocket Station software, as said before, is only designed to work with Japanese save data. The PAL and US saves are not recognized on the device even if you copy them across from another memory card. There is, however, one way to bypass this. If you have a modded PS2 or a way to edit the save data directly on a memory card, you're able to convert your US game save to a Japanese version. These files are literally the same thing, barring the file name. So all you simply need to do is replace the save game of the US data to its Japanese equivalent name. With your data loaded, have as much fun as humanely possible. When you're done, simply repeat the previous process in reverse to convert your game back to its English region. Puff out your chest, big man or woman. You've now become the playground king of games. Go ahead and flex on those scrubs in the playground. You deserved it. That brings us to the end of the guide. If there's anything I've missed out, please comment it below. I'm still continuing the main challenge run series, but the next video is taking me a bit of time. Don't worry, I assure you it is definitely worth it. As to my super supporters, I have not forgotten you. I'll give you all a proper shout out in the next type challenge video. Till then, stay awesome people. Hope you all draw a Raigeki for the win, and I'll be seeing you all soon.